Luke Skywalker and Harry Potter, two of the greatest heroes across any medium of all time, will finally face off to see who takes the crown. This is Sparta! Hello ladies and gentlemen and movie lovers of all kind and welcome back to the channel. And as always, I am your host, Brett Murphy, and for today's video it is going to be another cinema showdown, with today's combatants being Luke Skywalker and Harry Potter. If we had to crown one, just one of these characters as the greatest franchise leading hero of all time, which one should it be? I'd say it's about time to find out, so without further ado, let's hop right into things. Round 1. Weapons. Luke Skywalker brings to the battle his trusty lightsaber. Be it green, be it blue, it's always by his side. Powered by powerful kyber crystals and likely capable of cutting through just about anything, a lightsaber is one of the deadliest weapons in all of pop culture. We've seen them in a variety of colors and used in a multitude of ways for both attack and defense. You couldn't ask for a more reliable and ultimately effective weapon. Meanwhile, Harry Potter brings his magical wand to the playing field. This may seem like a no-brainer, but remember, this round is solely about the weapons themselves and what they are capable of, not the characters themselves, so no force powers included. With that being said, with the wand equipped, Potter has a plethora of spells at his disposal, including disarming spells, stun spells, and even lethal ones. This could keep Potter well out of range of Luke's lightsaber attacks and could easily give him the edge in almost any battle, relying on their weapons alone. When it comes to their weapons, yes, the lightsaber is far more iconic than a magical wand. Even just saying magical wand sounds sort of childish. But what Harry Potter is able to do with that wand is almost limitless. Without the force involved, the lightsaber is just a sword and limits Luke in battle. Therefore, I'm going to have to give round one to Harry Potter. <laughs> round two, abilities. And now this is the round that we can talk about the force. The Force is a metaphysical power that binds the Star Wars universe together. Now I could either go deeper and give you a long and drawn out in-depth explanation of the Force and how it works and metachlorians and all that fun stuff, or I can say it's basically telekinesis where certain people have some extra perks, like lightning or healing, but that's the short and sweet version. Harry Potter, however, doesn't really have many abilities. For all intents and purposes, he's just an average normal boy. He has some minor magical abilities as seen within the first Harry Potter before he got his wand, but other than than that, all of his magical ability is linked to his wand after saying a fancy word. Besides that, he's a parcel tongue, which means he can speak to snakes, but I can't see that ability coming much in handy in this situation. If it came down to a fight between these two, it would be a no-brainer. No matter what Harry did, Luke has the force, and that practically trumps all. All he would have to do is get Harry's wand from him and it would be game over. Whereas if Luke lost his lightsaber, he would still win the fight with ease. So looks like I'm going to have to give round two to Luke Skywalker. <laughs> round three, mentors. The student has now become the teacher is how the old saying goes. Yoda took on Luke as his sort of Padawan for a short period of time on Dagobah. Although he does so reluctantly as he believes that Luke is too old and lacks the patience of a Jedi. Only when convinced by Luke's persistence and Force Ghost Obi-Wan does he agree to help Luke. It's never really made clear how long Luke is there for though. Most Jedi are trained for years upon years until young adulthood. And it is certainly far less than that. Upon realizing Han and Leia are in trouble, Luke leaves prematurely to save them against Yoda's wishes. When Luke returns in Return of the Jedi to complete his training, Yoda is very ill and with his dying breaths, he confirms Luke's darkest fears, while also issuing a final warning about the temptations of the dark side. Harry Potter has seen a multitude of mentors throughout his Hogwarts stay. From Headmaster Albus Dumbledore, to Professor McGonagall, Professor Lupin, Severus Snape, and Sirius Black, among a few others. They've all had a hand in Harry's training and upbringing in the wizarding world, and they've all taught him well. The difference with these mentors is that they've had years with Harry, and they all have a far more personal connection to him. 
He sees most of them as his true family rather than the muggles he lives with who essentially despise him. I believe that the personal connection paired with the fact that these mentors essentially raised Harry in his most impressionable years gives him the edge. While Yoda is one of the greatest characters in all of Star Wars, he spent very little time with Luke that we saw. So when it comes to mentors, I'm going to have to give round three to Harry Potter. Round 4. Villains Another old saying for you, a hero is only as good as their villain. For Luke Skywalker, it is of course the powerful, menacing, and ruthless Darth Vader. Or, also formerly known as Anakin Skywalker, Luke's father. What else is there left to say about this global icon, arguably the most recognizable hero and possibly even character in all of pop culture around the world? As a character, he is also the chosen one in this universe and likely the most powerful Force user there ever was. And because of the personal connection he has to Luke, it tests Luke far beyond his limits in terms of his abilities and his emotions. And of course, Harry Potter faces off against he who must not be named, the slithering, slimy, merciless, and cunning Voldemort. Arguably the most powerful magical being in the wizarding world. He who must not be named is not Harry's father, but instead he murdered Harry's parents when he was just a baby and tried to kill him too, leaving him with that iconic lightning-shaped scar. Voldemort is an ever-present danger, with his followers around every corner with their ears perked up as they blend in. While it took a while for he himself to return to his full form, he is undoubtedly the most dangerous foe in that universe. His final assault on Hogwarts in the last film leads Harry to sacrifice himself to save his friends, only to be resurrected for their final epic showdown. Voldemort has since become a household name over the years due to the immense popularity of the Harry Potter franchise. But not only is Vader the more powerful villain, he is the more memorable one. By, like, a lot. So much so that it's not even close. I mean, it's Darth Vader. Although Voldemort killing Harry's parents makes it somewhat of an epic tale of revenge, Vader being Luke's father is iconic and a huge reason for these movies' success. So it looks like Luke is going to come back swinging into this fight and tie it up 2-2 because round 4 is going to Luke Skywalker. Hold on there for just a quick second. If you're enjoying this video, don't get stuck in the 89% who are currently watching and not subscribe to my channel. Be sure to hit that subscribe button right now in order to find more content just like this. It would be a huge help to me and my channel and I would greatly appreciate it. And while you're at it, don't forget to ring that little bell icon that way you can be notified about all of my latest uploads. And now onto the fifth and final round. And may the force be with you always. See how I did that there? Both franchises. May the force be Star Wars and always Harry. Harry. Final round. Character arc. Luke's journey was a fairly simple one. A young farm boy living with his aunt and uncle stumbles upon a few droids which lead him to an old man only to find out that he's a former Jedi Master and that Luke's parents were killed by the evil overlord Darth Vader. Young Luke is then thrust into the heart of the Rebellion as a new hope for them in their fight against the Empire as he learns to use the Force. From there, of course, we find him training to become a Jedi in order to defeat Vader, only to be confronted with the reality that Vader is in fact his father. He comes to realize that the only one that can stop Vader is Luke himself, but he also believes he may be able to save him. From there, we hit the extraordinarily divisive The Last Jedi. Personally, I love Luke's journey. He created what he feared most, turning his own nephew into Kylo Ren, essentially the Darth Vader of the First Order. In his shame, embarrassment, and inability to live up to the legendary Luke Skywalker name, a symbol of hope for the Resistance, he exiles himself. But through his training and time with Rey, he once again finds it within himself what it means to be a true Jedi. Harry Potter has a fairly similar journey. He is the boy who lived. Everybody in the Wizarding World knew his name before he even knew the Wizarding World existed. The only one to ever survive an attack from Voldemort, but that attack also led to the death of his parents. From discovering he's a wizard, to becoming a true hero willing to sacrifice himself to save his friends, Harry's journey follows the now fairly typical Chosen One storyline. But rather than falling into its tropes, it takes on an enchanting life of its own, thanks to the beautiful and fantastical world he inhabits, a wonderful group of lovable characters, and the fact that we just don't see this journey roll out over a short period of time. We see Harry grow up and become a man, become a legend even. The tale of the boy who lived, fulfilling his destiny and defeating Voldemort, as well as this phenomenal fish out of water story which sees Harry finding himself in all of this chosen one mess that he hates being a part of, finding his true family and his friends, and learning the importance of doing what it takes to protect those you love. Both of these heroes journeys are absolutely timeless. 
and some of the best hero's journeys ever brought to a screen. While I love them both nearly equally, I found that, as Luke's journey progresses, it becomes more complex and challenges us as viewers on how we so blindly love our heroes. And we must come to the realization that they have flaws, just like us. Luke's journey just has that little bit extra more to it that makes him more worth dissecting as a character. Looks like Luke is using a few Jedi mind tricks because the fifth and final round and the crown is going to go to... Luke Skywalker. <laughs> So that is all for today's video folks, be sure to let me know down in the comments if you agree or disagree with the winner, and feel free to let me know what you'd like to see for the next Cinema Showdown. If you enjoyed that video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, and if you'd like to see more content, consider subscribing to my channel and ringing that little bell icon, that way you can be notified about all of my latest uploads. And as always, stay safe, thank you so much for watching, and that's a wrap. Hey you, yeah you, if you made it this far, just know I appreciate you, and while you're here, consider hitting that subscribe button.